This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. Get the best deal in streaming, CuriosityStream and Nebula bundled together for less than $15 a year by heading to curiositystream.com slash ext. It's a 15 minute walk across the narrow cantilever bridge that connects Bagnoregio with its adjoining neighborhood, Civita. On this passage, one can revel in the central Italian countryside, looking down at the Tiber River Valley and across to neighboring flat top peaks dotting the horizon. After completing the crossing, almost everyone who enters Civita passes through Porta Santa Maria, a medieval gate that protects this naturally walled city. Above the gates, a bas relief of a lion holding a human head, an homage to a successful 15th century revolt, hints at the town's rich, protectionist history. Inside, it's quiet. Only the echo of footsteps reverberates off these ancient walls. A few paces in, the passageway opens to a main square which faces Chiesta San Donato. This faded coral church, the city's only, has seen many iterations. Today, it receives visitors and worshippers alike, and its bells proudly ring, breaking the early morning silence of this village in the clouds. In the piazza, pigeons outnumber people as they quietly peck around for crumbs while the sun starts to warm the square. The air is still protected by the ancient buildings that surround Piazza San Donato, and narrow stone paths amble out from the square leading to cozy Italian nooks. The small city is charming, magical, and contains hidden secrets that unfold like a good book. Its crumbling architecture, crawling ivy walls, and uneven cobblestone roads make it seem frozen in time. And in a way, it is. At least until the first bus arrives. Many of these passengers unload after an hour-long ride from Orvieto and before that, a two-hour rail connection from Rome. After getting off the bus in Bagnoregio, they hand 5 euros to the Big Litteria, walk across the same 1,200-foot, 366-meter bridge, and flood Civita with their cell phones, accents, and vacation money. Civita di Bagnoregio has been called the city in the sky, but maybe it should be the castle on an island. It's tiny, protected, and though nowhere near an ocean, isolated, surrounded on all sides by open air. However, its prevailing nickname is neither of these. Rather, it's La Cita Che Muere, the dying city, because of its constant, sometimes massive sloughing of earthly material. In fact, Civita is now one third of its original size thanks to this erosion. This continual reshaping happened over millennia, but nonetheless, that has made it, geologically speaking, a relatively quick process. Now in Civita there are 30 houses. 30, 30. And in the, in the recent past, in the Middle Age, the house probably uh, there was 300, not 50. Okay? Because in the Middle Age, in Civita, lived even that one or two thousand people. And now these house uh, are, uh, there are no more because they are falling down with the, the rest of the, the city. Because uh, every, statistically, every 100 years, every century, we lose uh, 20 meters of the city. This island in the sky wasn't always an island. Situated about 75 miles or 120 kilometers north of Rome, the foundation of the Tiber Valley was formed over millions of years of volcanic activity. Here, sandy loams and clay were deposited by the ocean. These marine layers were then covered repeatedly by lava and tuff emitted from the surrounding Volsini volcanoes. As nearby water and rivers flowed, they carved out geological mesas, which were favorites for ancient Italian civilizations to build atop. Bird's eye views provided security when the region was less unified and villages were more susceptible to invasion and combat with each other. The Etruscans founded Civita de Bagnoregio more than 2,500 years ago. They were an ancient civilization that occupied what is today northern Italy, including Tuscany, a name derived from the Roman's name for the Etruscans, Tusci. While Etruscans had formed their own unique culture, warfare between them and the Romans across the second century led to their assimilation into Roman culture, broadening the Roman presence across the region. One of the distinct Etruscan features that remained, though, were fortified villages on hilltops, which is why this is such a common and picturesque site across northern and central Italy today. 
Originally, Chivita and Bagnarezio were physically connected by a natural saddle, and Chivita was the municipality's original seat of government and operations. While the Romans replaced the architecture with their own Renaissance style, some vestiges of Etruscan innovation remained, such as water containment infrastructure and Etruscan-styled gates, one of which, the Porta Santa Maria, still stands today. But defensive gates didn't keep everyone out. From the 5th century through the 8th, Civita fell siege to a rotating cast of rulers, occupied first by the Goths and the Byzantines, followed by the Lombards, before becoming part of the Papal States in 774. Later, during the 13th century, it famously became the birthplace of Saint Bonaventure, a revered Franciscan philosopher and theologian. Like many of Civita's historic buildings, his childhood home has since fallen off the cliff as part of the city's erosive process. During World War II, Long after erosion and earthquakes had torn away the natural saddle, the Germans partially destroyed the man-made bridge that connected Civita to Bagnoregio. Civita was reconnected to the outside world by a temporary wooden bridge for the next 20 years, until 1965, when construction was completed on the concrete bridge that still stands today. Before this newest bridge, donkeys were used to shuttle in goods, but today, all supplies are ferried in on small service vehicles. There are no cars allowed in the village, except these and a Red Cross vehicle. The city's layout includes a main north-south street called a Cardo, and an east-west street called a Decamanus. There is also an unused tunnel, built by the Etruscans, that connects the city to the valley floor. A series of geological events over thousands of years, an earthquake in 280, another in 1695, and constant landslides, have both reshaped and shifted the footprint of Civita. In fact, the ridge where tourists hand over their 5 euro entry fee has dropped nearly 130 feet or 40 meters since the 1700s. It was this fickle geological disposition over the centuries, punctuated by the massive earthquake of 1695, that has triggered many residents to permanently flee the village. Chimita is unique because it is inside a, a wonderful landscape. Mm -hmm and his name is Pendelands Pendelen Valley, you know? You know, if uh, you, you have seen the photo of Civita, he's uh, uh, inside in the center of uh, a big valley, but a valley, valley with uh, a big, a strong, strong erosion. And uh, this is a, a, a living landscape, because every year the landslide the rivers uh, and uh, also the wind uh, can change the, the, the view, can change the landscape. Uh, the street, the street can fall down or or is it? We we lose five to six centimeters of uh, the muddy clays that are at the bottom of the valley every year. Today, Bagna Reggio is where the town's government, medical facilities, grocery stores, and schools sit, and where many of the people working in Civita live. Despite a physical separation, both sides of the bridge make up a single municipality. There are roughly 3,600 residents in Bagna Reggio, and a good number of these make the trek into Civita each day to open cafes, bars, shoe and leather shops, and lodging properties that service the increasing number of people visiting each year. In Civita proper, while the number fluctuates year to year and season to season, the full-time population hovers around just 10 to 15 residents. Now we are 10 persons, but it is a not, really, a not a significant number because they manage the DMV and the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And so you have to know that in Civita there are 20 DMV with 100 uh, bed. In Civita there are two. Civita can, can uh, you, you, we have 100 bed to sleep in Civita, you understand me? So there are 10 persons who live in Civita. There are every night 18 or 100 people that are tourists. Every day they change. but. Uh, is not uh, is not more a really a really town. There is a, a normal life of a little town. is a is a big big museum where 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 you can live and eat. 
In 2010, Chivita saw some 40,000 annual visitors, which, at the time, was a sizable number for a town that's just 300 by 500 feet or 90 by 150 meters. Today, the diminutive hamlet, roughly the size of two football fields, can host that many people in just one week. By 2019, the number of annual visitors had skyrocketed to 750,000, thanks in part to social media, but mostly because the local government did something particularly unique to Civita in 2013. It charged an entry fee. The first town in Italy to do so, Civita asked for one and a half euros per visitor to access the dying city via the pedestrian bridge. By adding a price that implied demand for the Civita experience, tourists soon lined up to see the region's trendiest historical landmark, providing a boon to town coffers. Since then, the fee has increased to five euros on the weekends and three euros midweek. At the time, Bagnareggio's town manager, Francesco Bagnotti, told The Guardian, quote, The ticket price has not discouraged people at all. In fact, it has increased the quality of tourism. In some ways, it makes the site more precious. Even the tourists are more attentive, they stay for longer, and are more respectful. The increased revenue for the town has been directed towards many goals, the primary of which is to fund efforts to help preserve what's left of it. But the small town government's cash flush also allowed Bagnotti to abolish all communal taxes and, pre-COVID, bring the unemployment rate down to zero. It wasn't just that people were finding work, they were creating it. Exemplified by the establishment of more than 200 small businesses, many catering to the droves of camera-happy day-trippers. Counterintuitively, the city's picture-perfect remoteness and imposed exclusivity has turned it from dying to thriving. Yet, this inundation has also stressed what little infrastructure exists. Within Chivita's boundaries, there are dozens of small lodging properties, mostly bed and breakfasts. Each is charming and more luxurious than rustic. At the Libero Mente Bed and Breakfast, airy brick rooms with exposed beams and suites with names like Al Pacino and Paul Newman cost guests around 100 euros per night. But besides lodging like this and a few restaurants, that's where the amenities end there are only two public toilets. If an employee or tourist forget something, even as minuscule as a paperclip, they have to travel back to Bagnareggio to purchase it. For the few that actually live there, there is nothing of service in Civita. No grocery store, no post office, no pharmacy. Taken together, in a town reshaped exclusively for day trippers, with only a handful of full-time residents and little in the way of establishments that serve anything but tourism, Civita is effectively a curated trip back in time. Thus, when the sun sets and the hordes of visitors dissipate, those there for the night are treated to a markedly different experience. While the sometimes 10,000-plus day visitors deal with long lines, crowded piazzas, and constant chatter, by night, it's empty and serene. Yes, in the night, uh, we come back in the past, in the Middle Ages, with the atmosphere. There is anybody. Only the, the people who, who sleep in Civita, the tourists, the tourists who sleep in Civita, the fans, usually they are a, a couple, and so they don't go in, uh, around. And so it's a very special uh, experience to sleep uh, in Civita, and it's very strange also for me. I never, I never do, do this in 10 years. I have to do this uh, this year for an, an experiment. Uh, Really, is a incredible experience. Those that travel here to experience early mornings and calming evenings are searching out the isolation that drove many away. Italian hilltop villages pepper the country's landscape, and like Civita's population, their numbers are dwindling. As a country, Italy has a shrinking population as its birth rate declines and young people emigrate to other countries for professional opportunities. This demographic shift is being felt in tiny villages most, so the government recently launched varied creative measures to address this, including encouraging people to have children and paying stipends to foreigners to relocate to small towns, with the caveat that they must invest in the community through a business or something similar. In the case of Civita, though, nature has won repopulating the town is little more than an unreasonable pipe dream. Now, the focus is on preserving what's left of the dying city. I think uh, in the next uh, five or six years, we, we can uh, start the real, the real work uh, to save Civita, okay? And uh, we start from the bottom of the valley, where the, the little river that are uh, 
meeting of the valley. We had to go to the river much more slowly. And then, step by step, we go to the top with different uh, interventions, different work or interpret for the different uh, kind of uh, the rocks. Okay? Because in the bottom there is the, the, the valley clay, in the middle of the leaf there is the, the, the paths that are very uh, softly. And on the top of each of Civita, there, there are the paths that are much more strong, like, like a rock. Part of this preservation is done by reinforcing the sloped layers with a stepped structure. On the top layers, steel rods are inserted to add strength. Additionally, vegetation restores the hillside to naturally combat erosion. Luca says these steps can be implemented incrementally over the next 20 years, which makes the project achievable from a logistical standpoint and a financial one. Also potentially helping this is the prospect that Civita will be designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2022, which would give it protection, preservation support, and funding, while also potentially regulating the number of visitors. Town officials, including Luca, worked diligently to submit an application for this designation in early 2021. Part of their dossier reads that, quote, no other World Heritage property provides this unique combination of urban, architectural, and archaeological vestiges and of a unique geological formation actively erasing the human presence in an accelerated and partially unstoppable process of decay. The exceptional intensity and rapidity of the evolution of the geological process visible in Civita is unmatched in Italy and at the global scale. Luca feels confident they'll receive the designation, and if they do, it would help to further solidify Civita as, essentially, a living museum. But amid all the strategy and talk to preserve the physicality of Civita, there is an Italian culture that's still alive and worth saving, too. While most nights here are best characterized by the quiet, a cherished few see the town's population swell as festival goers return to celebrate time honored traditions. For example, the town's residents continue the 400 year long tradition of the Good Friday procession and carry a 15th century wooden crucifix from Civita to Bagnoreggio. In daily life, locals can be seen harvesting chestnuts in the valley or pressing grapes in ancient Etruscan cellars used by their ancestors. These cultural traditions demonstrate that people do actually authentically live in the area beyond the throngs of tourists. Over-tourism is an issue that plagues popular sites worldwide, including many iconic destinations around Italy. Yet, Civita is unique in that its increased visitor numbers, more than half of which come from Italy itself, were invited and, ironically, may end up saving the city. Ignored hilltop houses are becoming impeccably maintained guest homes. Increased tourism money means younger Italians can launch businesses in their own community and believe in their own futures. Crumbling cliff walls now have the resources and attention to potentially stave off catastrophic demise. In only a decade, Civita flipped a potential problem into a creative solution, and the success of the town's subsequent transformation is now viewed as a model for similar enclaves. Luca Profili, Civita de Bagnoreggio's mayor, told Reuters, quote, our motto is resilience because Civita was founded by the Etruscans, passed through the Roman era, and the entire medieval period to reach the present day. In his early 30s himself, Profili is a young leader who bucks Italy's aging trend. He's doubling down on encouraging Civita as a tourist destination and is cautiously optimistic about its future prospects. But most of all, he knows it's a special place. He continued, quote, the fragility of Civita is bad, but it is also what makes it unique. It is the idea that you have it today, but you don't know if you will have it tomorrow. Civita harbors a contradiction. Its dramatic physical isolation makes it desirable, but it's also what led to its near abandonment. Like they have for thousands of years, however, the residents are rising to the challenge and protecting Civita's greatest asset, the town itself. The lion adorning the Porta Santa Maria gate is a centuries-old symbol of pride, signaling the ability to stand tall in the face of exterior pressures. It isn't just an honoring of the past. It's a statement of resolve for the future. So, if you watch Extremities, you probably also watch Wendover, Half as Interesting, Real Engineering, Real Life Lore, Minute Physics, Wonder Why, all the educational-ish explainer channels. 
Well, all of those channels and more are on Nebula, where the viewing experience is even better. That's because we publish videos there early and ad-free, including exclusive bonus content like extended cuts. Plus, we make occasional big-budget Nebula originals, videos we could never afford to make on YouTube. Us creators founded and run Nebula, so we've crafted it to be the best home to our content, but of course, we still want everyone to be able to watch our stuff, so we've made it insanely easy to get access by partnering with CuriosityStream. Now, when you sign up for any subscription at curiositystream.com slash ext, including the annual one which is on sale for less than $15 a year, you get access to Nebula too. Of course, CuriosityStream also has tons of stuff worth watching, including Iceman about the history of humans in Antarctica. So two great streaming services for one great price. Less than $15 a year when you sign up at curiositystream.com slash ext today. You'll be supporting this channel and getting two great streaming services that you'll actually use, so head to curiositystream.com slash ext.